everybody, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork, and with me I have today Norman Sanso. Hello, hello. And awesome brownie reviewer, Silver Quill. I have a merit badge in pain. <laughs> I, I, I have a degree in coughing and sneezing and being very unproductive. Uh, how have you guys been? Well, I've been... I've been sick as well. It's been uh, the holiday seasons were not terribly restful, but we uh, recover. We carry on. We uh, keep trudging. Oh, and by the way, before we go any further, Happy New Year, everybody who's listening! Yay! Ow. Happy New Year! First, first review of 2015. Yay! And everyone's sick. Oh God! <laughs> Greetings, oh. world of tomorrow. And we are not well, gonna try not to die. 2014 has been kicking our butts at, to, to the very last minute. But we are here to kick the butt of 2015, and we're going to start with a review of a pony comic. And this time we're going to review issue 24 of the main series, uh, which is the one starring the Kitty Mark Crusaders, Discord, and Fluttershy. Written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Brenda Hickey. So, ah. Uh, this one is going to be an interesting one to tackle because it's a one shot within the main series, pretty much like the one with the pets. Yep, yep. And also, this feels like a Friends Forever. It it very much does. It has the same structure. I mean, it is a rather simple story, actually. Uh, the Cutie Mark Crusaders meet up with Fluttershy to go on a field trip, and the escort happens to crash onto them. And what happens next is that instead of going on a field trip, they go on a time travel trip. As Discord joins the group and he takes out his not a tardis trademark <laughs> and travels through different time periods, places, and just to have a fun fantasy adventure. And that's pretty much it now, isn't it? Well, I will say half your summary sounded like a ship fic. <laughs> <laughs> he crashes into all of them. And then he reaches into his pocket and takes out not a TARDIS. Ah. Not a TARDIS. Ah. And, all the, and all the CMC are like, I need an adult. <laughs> I am an adult. Well, you don't have to worry because it's smaller on the inside. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, but anywho, uh, but anywho. Um, yeah, I mean, now with the synopsis out, I think we should just uh, say what we think of the comic. And uh, I am always a supporter of the inverted alphabetical order. So, like always, let's start with Silver and let's finish on me. So, man, you got the floor. All yours. I should have spent enough time on it. <laughs> <laughs> How to describe this? I, I know of no such line. <laughs> How to describe this comic? I, I'm tempted to call it filler because it's just... A lot of stuff happens, but none of it really feels like it has a huge impact. But then, in their time travel escapades, there's one scene that stands out very strongly, and I'll probably want to talk about that for a good bit. The thing about this comic is that it's fun, it's lighthearted, it's got a, a good romp, and it's building off previous comics. The, the Friends Forever with Discord and the CMC, Discord's friendship with Fluttershy, it's building those circles, and I enjoy it when characters have these circles that begin to intersect it makes for greater diversity than just the main six going on an adventure every time my one wariness is that although i love so many of the pop culture references at the same time i i'm a little wary when a comic is so hey look here's this is pop culture oh look this is pop culture hey let's make another pop culture reference it's all in the foreground rapid fire it's like guys Good comedy is more than just referencing something else. Yeah, this comic kind of suffers of Robin Williams syndrome in the Aladdin sequels. Uh, <laughs> and that wasn't, and half the time that wasn't Mr. Williams even voicing the genie. That is true. That is true. He like voiced only for half of them. But no, that is absolutely right because uh, you can only make so many pop culture references until they become tired. Even even Discord at one point says, "I'm sorry, but this bit has way too many pop culture references." <laughs> Off with you. Uh, I I do highly enjoy this comic. Like what Silver said, the whole story is entertaining. Um, I don't know. Like, like I said from the very beginning, it felt like. A Friends Forever series, which is not bad, but it felt like 
what Silver said from the very beginning, filler, which is not bad. It is, it is filler, but it's very pretty feeling. Uh, <laughs> see, pretty feeling. Uh, I did a wordplay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so smart. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I actually do like uh, how you put it when you say. It is good to know what happens after those friendships have been established. Like the one with Fluttershy and Discord and Discord with the CMCs. And this is a good setup. And it does take... It makes good use of it. But it also kind of leaves you wanting to wanting for more. Because right when the comic is getting in, uh, in, enthralling, interesting, and like, oh, wow, look at that, there is conflict going on. Um, it ends. The award for shortest and most abrupt ending. Yeah, like well, we haven't got to the we haven't gotten to the Friends Forever series yet. But there are a couple of abrupt endings on that on those as well. Mm. Uh, but boy, is this comic kind of like um, stuff, 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 stuff. Conflict the end, and you're left there thinking, how should I feel about this? <laughs> or should I feel anything? Or what was the comic's purpose? What? No, like what did we learn today? That Discord has a TARDIS machine that is the opposite of a TARDIS, because that's what Discord has. There was actually no lesson to it. Like, this will be one of the perfect comics where you have Twilight standing in front of the uh, letter, about to write a letter to Princess Celestia, and she's like, um, um, I'll do this tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, there is a lesson to this one. You, it's not that obvious because of how Discord is. And it does say that Discord has changed and he's a bit um, less selfish and more considerate. But you wouldn't know that by Fluttershy near the end where she's having a meltdown. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, poor Fluttershy. Oh, that she's must, that, loving that. That might, be the, that might be the moment where I'm like, wait, this is Fluttershy saying this. I know. Fluttershy, the, the pony who believed in him when no one else did? Well, she does have a breaking point. We all know that. Yes, but normally she tries to use the stare. Really? Normal. Well, when she has a breakdown. Uh, but or <clears throat> or or her own royal cantalot voice. You're going to love me. <laughs> well, if sir, well, the situation here is like this. Okay, we're going to reviewing territory yeah, right now. Are, so yeah, let's yeah, yeah. Step let's back go a bit. on to that. From now on, guys, we're gonna go. Uh, hip deep into spoilers. So if you don't, uh, if you haven't read the comic yet, or if you want to, if you want to read it, uh, go ahead and stop right here. But from now on, we're going to review it page by page. And if we get passionate about it, and we are going to likely get passionate about it, uh, we're going to review it panel by panel. So uh, we're going to st stop here for spoilers. Okay, go. Let's go for it. All right. Ro Rosebud is the sleigh. Oh no! <laughs> Nicole Kidman is dead. Oh no! Snake Bruce kills Willis Dumbledore. <laughs> no! Edward Norton is actually Brad Pitt. Oh no! And Bruce Willis is all has been dead. Has He's been always, dead all along. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. And in oh, Interstellar, the humans are the aliens. Oh no! <laughs> Holy cow! They actually are. I didn't figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> I thought that was the whole point of the movie. <laughs> no, you're right, you're right. I, because I forgot about that moment inside the black hole. <laughs> you're absolutely right. They are actually the aliens. Oh, oh dear. Boy. Oh, my gosh. But yeah, okay. Well, So, we start with uh, uh, with the CMCs getting out of Fluttershy's house, uh, getting ready for a field trip. And right after they get out of the house, meteorite. No, 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 it's actually called... Wait, yeah, it, yeah, this crash show is a meteorite. Mm. Sweetie Belle knows a lot. Yeah, yes, I said meteorite. Super adorable Sweetie Belle on that page, followed by exasperated <laughs> Sweetie Belle. I know! Exasper Belle. Oh. Uh, it, is, it is good because Sweetie Belle usually is the dumb... Of the hey. show, like she, no, really, she's usually the one that is like, oh, really, oh, seriously, like, look at her in the in the Kitty Marcus Crusaders micro. She's kind of like the dumb one, mm. and right here she's been very smart, and I love how angry she is. She's like, <laughs> ah, why are you surprised that I know about this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 
Um, Brother Shai tells everyone to, well, back up a bit because they might not know what it is and it could be dangerous, you know, falling things from the sky. It could be a symbiote. And then it opens on face hugger. I know! <laughs> or even worse, dancing Toby Maguire. <laughs> oh, no. The greatest <laughs> cinema tragedy. Uh, <laughs> you you actually had to go there, didn't you, Norman? Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's not discuss a Spider-Man three, please. Nope. But thank God it's not it's not Tobey Maguire or a fish hugger or a dancing frog with a top hat and a, and a cane. <laughs> but none other than Discord, of course, who comes out of the asteroid and uh, meteorite, I mean, <laughs> and says, "Oh, you're going on a field trip. I'm going with you, magic girl transformation." <laughs> Uh, but before that happens, I, I just enjoy how Discord is best friends with Fluttershy, giving them her, giving her a hug, and painting hooves, and thinking of plot to overthrow Celestia. I mean, boys. <laughs> that is just so cute. And I gotta say. Uh... Brenda Hickey did phenomenal job with all the expressions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, Dis Discord is is so animated, despite this being a comic, and Fluttershy's exasperation. I mean, when they're on the sofa, ooh, kinky, mm -hmm. and <laughs> and she's trying to talk him down from uh, overthrowing Celestia. You can see the frustration in her eyes. <laughs> I, I will say, Magical Girl Discord transformation is. Uh, I can't burn my eyes out fast enough. <laughs> Moon prism <laughs> power. What is the what is the brain bleach? I need uh. a dose of that. Uh. But then again, I've seen Sailor Stars. I can roll with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Though uh, I also I I do love to how uh, how Brenda Hickey does capture the uh, the kinetic energy that Discord brings. But one thing I have to criticize about the the, the way that uh, she draws him is that at some points. The eyebrows lo grow so big, they actually look like part of his hair. On half of the pictures, I feel like I am looking at Discord with Discord with Carl Sagan's haircut. It's well, so weird. She's been learning the art of the Tengen Topaz or the Killer Kills. Uh, main protagonist has big eyebrow. He grows in every episode. <laughs> And the ponies are already nudists. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Though in this one, they are acutely dressed with uh, Girl Scouts outfits. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of funny. I mean, technically, this is a Cutie Mark Crusader outing, but I do love that they have, in essence, Girl Scout hats and sashes with merit badges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, be and... which means the Crusaders actually can do something. Probably. Yeah, they they at least do have merits of doing Different things. I didn't know that uh, Equestria did have a branch of the uh, branch of the Girl Scouts. Didn't the show feature something like that? I, I thought there was a Girl Scout um, pony there, in there. There was Spike at your service. There was a little Girl Scout ringing for donations, and Zakura gave away one of Spike's uh, <laughs> gems, and then walked oh, off like a boss. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. You, you, you're talking about uh, just for sidekicks. Oh, yeah. Man, I get those confused. Probably because they're both awful. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just for sidekicks. The, the I guess I, I want to omit both from memory, but yeah. But they did have a Girl Scout pony. She was adorable. Zakura was kind of mean. And I've taken uh -huh. us away from the comic. <laughs> uh, That's a review for no, another no, day. No. We should we should talk about that those episodes another day because I do have a kind of a bone to pick with those as well. But yeah, back back to this back back to the the, the actual comic. Well, Discord uh, uh, talks alone for the field trip and he's getting really bored. <laughs> he's so bored that he tries to feed the CMC to a <laughs> crocodile. Not uh, intentionally. Uh, of no, course. It's, it's an alligator. It's an alligator. 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 <laughs> right. And uh, they are like, okay, let's go do something fun. Why don't we just travel back in time? And uh, Fluttershy seems not convinced by it until Discord says, oh, you know, we can visit this giant butterfly thingy that is way bigger than you are. <laughs> and Fluttershy is like, okay, we can go. <laughs> she has oh, no. the biggest eyes <laughs> I have ever seen. Uh, She's like 80% uh. eyes. <laughs> 
Well, now, J- James, I, I am disappointed. What? What? You, you overlooked such a super important detail. I, I find it somewhat disheartening. <gasps> oh, no. Disco- oh, Discord heart boxers. Yeah, and CD Mills face. Oh, oh, God, it's just awesome. Gosh, Dad, I think I was trying to avoid talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> heart, heart dotted boxers confirmed. Yep. Uh, and she develops face. <laughs> she has the one thousand miles there in that in that panel. She's like, I have seen some things. No, no, and that, I that, that's, see them. that's the face of I need an adult. <laughs> that's the face of now I like women. <laughs> I got, no. uh, ah, there goes the last strand that joined me to straight and and feminine. But anywho, oh my gosh, no, no, it is it, it, it is awesome the the fact that Discord doesn't wear any clothes, but at, as soon as he puts some clothes on, hard dotted boxers. It's like, oh, awesome. well, great. Well, well, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, super cider, super squeedy cider. However, you say it, that title always confounds me. <laughs> the cider episode. The cider episode. Fluttershy sleeps in the buff. <laughs> Ooh, my. Oh god. <laughs> And, and somehow that's a big deal, even though not. Yep. Mm, uh, that, I also forgot about that one. Mm, uh, super maybe, speedy that cider is... squeezy 6000. There we go. Jeez. Oh, my gosh. That episode pisses me off as well. I do have hey, a few I like that one. That, uh, <laughs> I have conflict with, conflicted feelings with that episode. But we are sidetracking so much. <laughs> I blame the fact that this comic has no focus. But, but, but it's oh, awesome, gosh. but it's still good. It is, it is a fun comic so far, but it has so little focus. But yeah, Discord, Discord says, let's travel back in time. So she's like, no. Discord is like, we visit giant butterfly thing that you're going to love. Fluttershy is like, okay. And then we start the parade of pop culture references that uh, Silver was making uh, reference to at the beginning of the of the review. Not that much, but hey. Uh, oh my gosh, seriously, almost a quantum singularity happens because of the <laughs> amount of pop culture references that were thrown in like three panels. But it's all um, good, it's all good. We've seen Time Turner <laughs> making little references throughout the series. Yep. But uh, this one, they're just like, okay, we're dropping all pretenses, here he <laughs> is. Uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, we are not even, we are not pretending anymore. It is the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Fez, bow die, don't worry, it's smaller on the inside. <laughs> it's... it's... And there Actually, are too it's... many friends already, oh god. Actually, it's kind of funny that Discord's got the Fez and Bowtie but is kicking the David Tennant stand-in out. <laughs> so, is Discord the, the 11th regeneration? Um, no so, idea. So, perfect symbolism. <laughs> as, long, as long as Time Turner doesn't scream, I don't want to go! <laughs> uh, nope, not even a chance. Had that have, oh my god, you're so hard, you can be so heartless. <laughs> that is so sad. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you, Okay, I know I'm I know I'm diverting, but for a lot of people they they criticize that last line of David Tennant's as whiny. Just like well, it's kind of funny. The whole of Channel Awesome seems to be resentful of that ending. Eh, no comment. I enjoyed the tenth. Oh, I you know what? I didn't watch the third season with David Tennant. I, I watched up until the second one, the one with um what's the name of the nurse? Uh, 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 Martha? Martha, Martha, yes, that's the one. That's the one. Uh, uh, that's the last one I watched. I couldn't criticize David Tennant's exes because I was too busy going. David Tennant, no, <laughs> no, baby, don't go. My favorite doctor. Yeah. Mm. Anywho, anywho. anywho, well, you, as you can notice, yeah, we are going all over the place. But then again, it's kind of a problem with this comic because it's there is the like. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, there is little focus to it because then we start going into the time travel and the first place we go to is Egypt. Well, before we start in Egypt, we we need to mention something that's interesting that Discord mentioned about time traveling. Fratishai says, is it it dangerous to time travel? We might change the past so we never exist. And Discord replies, oh Fratishai, don't be silly. You can't change the past. Believe me, I tried. That would be, that would raise an Bajillion continuity issues. No matter what you do, or sorry, what what you do, you already did it. Actually, my favorite line is when Scootle asks, "The past can hurt us." 
And and Discord replies, I'm afraid so. If you live if you live long enough, it ends up happening a lot. Now that is very poignant. <laughs> that is yeah, that is really poignant. Because it keeps coming back to haunt you, the, regarding of what you have done. Mm. Yeah. But we can we can go forever on that. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go but ahead. we're at, we're actually in the the spot that I wanted to talk about the most. Ah. The absolute mostest. Ooh, right. Yes, the time because, travel to Egypt, right? The time travel to Egypt. And with the hieroglyphs that show the cutie marks of our heroines on the walls and all that good stuff. But we, to this, we have to kind of flash back to the Nightmare Rarity arc for a sec. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Which, back then, and this criticism for me still holds true, I was not a fan of the idea of making Nightmare Moon a mind parasite. Mm-hmm. That it's some sort of separate entity that took over Princess Luna regardless of her own emotional state and that then it took over Rarity and now in this flashback it's revealed that he took over some sort of Anubis type character and that somehow Nightmare Moon has been an enemy throughout time I know a lot of people might be attracted to that idea I've had any number of people that try to cite the comics for me uh, when, whenever I've talked about Luna's rather hasty redemption through force I still don't like this idea I still don't like the idea that you've, you're you changing the nature of Nightmare Moon from a cautionary tale about pride and envy to basically just an evil spirit that, that could take over just about anyone I well I guess it's I guess in that level, it's not as insulting as explaining the force with midi chlorians, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> it is it is kind of like it it's kind of jarring when it clashes one with the other, um, like trying to give an explanation. Sometimes simplicity is best. This is kind of like complicating it needlessly. True, it's, true. But it's the how do I put this? They try to put reasoning behind why. Um, Nightmare Moon became well. Sorry, why Luna became Nightmare Moon? That's one of the reasons why they try to well put reason behind said event. And the only thing they could think of at the time was, hey, let's put an evil spirit inside Luna. Yay! Uh, see, I kind of, I thought the reasoning of she had her her jealousy and resentment changed her. I that a change from within is far more powerful than a possession from something else. Mm, true. It's a it's a greater cautionary tale. And uh this is gonna come down to personal preference. But for me, I I really was like, oh, you guys really want to continue this thing? I was hoping Nightmare Rarity would be the end of it. Mm. Also they're also kind of implying that the elements of harmony are reborn across time. That is so weird. Mm. I agree with that. That is so we- yeah. I don't understand that because apparently in this in this timeline or this time period or whatever the bad guys are uh, well these Anubis guys they are anthropomorphic dogs so the good guys are like cats, cats <laughs> that have the colors of the main six because there is a Fluttershy cat there is a Pinkie Pie cat there is an Applejack cat Very there is kind of cat. like a Rainbow Dash cat but the one that seems to be the leader of them it has the colors of Spike. It's purple and green. Well, I thought it. I thought it was meant to be Twilight, but yeah, it does have the green eyes. Although Spike and Twilight are pretty darn similar in color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, although, with the purple thing and all that. Yeah. So that just makes this more awkward because the cat is attracted to Discord. Mm-hmm. Bast is her name. B double uh... So you've got Dis Spike shipping. <laughs> Dislike twist <laughs> shipping, and in Soviet Russia, the pussy licks you. Oh God! Oh, God. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Uh... I am supposed to be the one doing these kind of dirty jokes, but no, you you went ahead and did it. Well done. Uh, that's <sighs> right. I went forward and I'll never my look job, back. Man. Uh... Oh my God. Uh, but it, it, but it, it is funny though the panel where Father Shai goes to oh Miss Miss Bass and then and the cat is like shh <laughs> uh, we can clearly tell that Bats Bats was his Bat Bats Bats Bass 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 has a thing for Discord and they oh, were an item before 
crashing hard on him. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. Crashing hard. And, uh, and then Sweetie Belle gives the answer to defeat Nightmare Moon, thereby either ensuring continuity or messing it up. Who knows? No, it's like this could sit from the very beginning. What's done, it's done. Like, wow, if you really think about it, like time traveling and stuff, this is a concept where they say don't mess things up or you might change the future. But what, what if it's your doing that you... Whatever is done, it's done. Like, if you did something and it's already there. Like, mm, that's the thing to think about. In in my most humble opinion about the physics of time traveling, I have described the point of view that <laughs> Michael Crichton has in his novel Timeline. In that, if you travel back in time, if you make any changes in the past, what you are creating is a different timeline, mm-hmm. a different alternate universe that has nothing to do with your universe. Oh. So when you travel back in time to your time, you travel back in back to the uh, uh, parallel universe that you are all from, and not the one that you just created. Well, basically, like the Back to the Future two explanation from Doc Brown, where he explains that there's a time slip in between. Go watch the movie; it's a really good one. Yeah, yeah. And apparently, we all must be riding hoverboards and dressing silly and playing games with buttons. It's not cool. Yeah, and where is my Josh Forty Two sequel? <laughs> <laughs> so after that very terrible Back to the Future thing, um, we go to well, the future, and apparently, the future is conquered by cyber ponies and very confusing-looking green ponies. You get I'm, I'm sure they're really nice cyber ponies. This comic has a way of saying the bad guys weren't so bad. True, but, but I, they're very nice. I got no Although, idea what to think about this because, like, from my knowledge of Doctor Who, cyber ponies are not nice. <laughs> they're not, but you know, I'm trying to find the silver lining here and not believe that our pastel-colored ponies will be conquered and assimilated. Yeah. Oh, now I'm now I'm sad. Yeah, but no problem, no problem. Um, after the future, uh, after a few jiggles, this jiggling of, uh, what you call this, livers and levers, we go to, well, uh, the underwater Kelpie city of Catalyst? Cold Lantis. Yeah, Cold Lantis, the pun, so am I. Yes, and... but, but we forgot to mention the spoilers. Uh... More Doctor Who references. Spoilers, just spoilers. <laughs> Well, um, at least we do know that sea ponies are real. Shoo be doop 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 be doop. Uh, plus, well, if, if it's a Kelpie like in the Pets uh, comic, then these are ponies who would gladly flood the mainland, but with the best of intentions. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still cynical about that. Well, and while doing so, with a song, shoo be doop 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 be doop. <laughs> So when I ever, when I review Rescue at Midnight Castle, that so those, <laughs> those things terrify me. Uh, they have the eyes of the de- of a demon. Well, that's <laughs> no. Well, that's first generation ponies. Oh God, there, there's a lot of sh- <laughs> scarring the eighties, scarring children's psyche since the death of Optimus Prime. Oh God, did you did you know that Hasbro wanted to kill off uh, Duke from GI Joe? Which, because they killed off Optimus Prime first, they had to throttle back on that. Oh, yeah. yeah so, so, but, yeah, well, hey, I remember being a little kid, very little, and seeing Duke take a snake to the heart. Uh, no problem, and, he's just sleeping. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like oh, okay, I freaked out a little. <laughs> no problem, he's just sleeping. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, childhood answers, he's just sleeping. Yay. So, Anyway, anyway, back but, into the not tardis, we go yes. to prehistorical times where the main, well, the group meets dinosaurs and Fluttershy is really, really hyped for it. Really hyped. Uh, and I will say dinosaurs were also a part of my childhood, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So oh. what is, it? although it's funny where they first reveal the dinosaurs, I keep getting drawn to the little green one that <laughs> has the cheek to blow a raspberry at a T-Rex. <laughs> And I'm looking at the T-Rex with probably lips, if you look at it. Yeah, it's got li- they've all got uh, lips. Maybe they're c- capable of conversation. 
Yeah. Oh God, talking about conversation. Do you remember that one show from the eighties called Dinosaurs? They're animatronic, I think, or people in dinosaur costumes. What do you mean, Jim Henson's dinosaurs? Oh, I think so. It was on Disney, I think. It was like, uh, like a family sitcom kind of thing. Oh yeah, not the mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. That was pretty but, interesting. It was. It was. It was. I love that show, although it had the most depressing ending. Oh God! But, oh, this would be great. Discord's there to cause extinction of the dinosaurs. There you go. There's your comic. <laughs> oh, oh God! But no. yeah. but but it's kind of funny seeing this. Makes me think of the reflections arc, mm. where we saw a T Rex with a with Fluttershy's cutie mark. <laughs> oh God! And yet here the dinosaurs are all blank flakes. So I'm sure the Crusaders uh, are are identifying immediately. Yeah, I mean, oof, dinosaur is dinosaur Fluttershy. Oh, I I think that's a parallel universe kind of deal instead of this one, because they travel to an alternate universe instead of time. It's true, but come on, what kind of what kind of a show would that make? My little dino, my little dino. Aha! <laughs> and they solve they solve their friendship problems by eating their friends. Yep, solve my problem. I eat my friends, and I have no problem with that friend anymore. That's right. And I'm not hungry. <laughs> Indeed. Two birds with one stone. Yay. Yay. Uh, but talking about birds, we, we do have this one eagle claiming or capturing all the CMCs. Yes, that's called a rock. <laughs> a rock. Wow. Yes, R-O-C. It's, I think it's pronounced rock. Is that but, real? I, I've seen some well, things well, it's, before. It's not real, real. We'd all be in big trouble if it was real, real. <laughs> right. But but it is a fantasy uh, or a mythological bird said to carry off elephants. I believe its origin lies in India. Oh, really? No. Yeah. Hmm. So it was it was renowned for a bird big enough that it could steal and eat an elephant. Oh, wow. But, uh, and it takes the CMC. Huh. Which I got to be honest, if it's if it's uh, if it's able to carry an elephant, those talons are very tiny. This poor rock suffers from tiny talon syndrome. <laughs> or it could be still young. It could be still young. There you go. Or or it could be cold out. <laughs> uh, it is still winter for you, right? Yes. Where's my wrap up? Oh God! Oh, gosh. You know, uh, uh, looking looking at this whole uh, segment uh, with the prehistoric animals and all that, it makes me wonder. Uh, 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 Whitley did a great job. Uh, no, it's Brenda Hickey. Brenda Hickey did a great job uh, doing the designs and all that. But it, I wonder what would it look like if it was Andy Price doing the artwork? Oh, because re- remember that T Rex, <laughs> uh, the the one you guys were talking about mm-hmm. with the the Fluttershy cutie mark and everything. The dinosaurs in this pan in these pages wouldn't look terrifying. <laughs> but here's the thing, like I, I can see some artists doing some uh drawings and like some comics can be done by other artists and for this one, for this issue specifically, I can't see Andy Price and Katie Cook doing so because the feel of the story it's not right. You know oh, I'm mean? not saying I'm not, I'm not saying that I wish Andy Price was doing the artwork, but yeah, you're just wondering. Uh, yeah, because I will agree. No, I will agree with you. Like in the tone of this uh, this uh, comic, trying to put more realistic animals in it, yeah, it would have been terrifying, but it would have been a shatter of tone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the the Andy Price flutter sh- soar, mm. uh, <laughs> it looked terrifying. It was meant to be because you're supposed to be fearful for Celestian Star Swirl. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, this one, if Fluttershy is supposed to be fascinated, I don't think she'd be fascinated if they looked terrifying. Oh, yeah, but yeah. the dragons she are. Be, so. mm. She will be scared of her pants. She will be freaking out. Oh, true, well, true. Good, good thing she's not wearing pants. Ooh la la. Oh, my. Well, she's wearing a skirt. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. But, but anywho, so um, after Rock, well, uh, Rock uh, took the CMCs, we, we can see that this got both Fluttershy and, well, <laughs> that this could didn't do anything like... Mm, great friends, great friends you uh, are. Oh, sorry. Just w- what one last thought on the on the dinosaur panel. Mm-hmm. There's packs so tight together. All I can think of is the Last Supper, where with the word bubble, everyone who wants to be in the photo, get on this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Scooch a bit to the center. You're not all fitting in. 
Uh, oh. And then you have conspiracy theories about one person getting added in later on by Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, the heads oh. of the dinosaurs they make a melody but here I am so so crusaders taken by giant bird much tension we've got three pages to wrap this up oh god uh, yeah we're introducing the life or death scenario rather quickly here mm-hmm. this is the this is probably the weakest part of the comic oh uh, yep true <clears throat> I mean while yeah, I found I the agree. while I found the the com- the Egypt questionable in terms of world building this one it's fluttershy understandably mad at discord but then she starts doubting him as a friend based on what bast said Mm -hmm. and then we don't really see know how long she's been flying after this creature but she passes out it's like this is only three panels it's like okay did she get tired really fast or have they been flying a really long time there's no there's no sense of it. Oh, that, that is true. Because from panel to panel, we can't tell that how long they've been flying after the rock. So to me, it's just like she jumped from said spot where she saw a dinosaur, flew a bit, got tired, and then faint. And I'm assuming here this Scott called his buddy, took everyone to safety and well uh, we go on further to the panel but anywho on this page it doesn't it it doesn't feel like she's been flying for a very long time and granted she's not a strong flyer Mm. but she's made longer trips yeah when push come to shove she can fly yeah when there is a situation where she actually has to uh, depend on adrenaline I mean hell we can go as far as uh, the season 2 premiere where they were flying, oddly enough, after Discord. Uh, no, they were uh, flying after the Rainbow Dash who had been discarded. Mm-hmm. I mean, in that case, Fluttershy didn't give a bother about uh, having to fly super fast, super hard for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yet, in this one, she's kind of making a big deal out of it. But like what Silver said, we have three pages left. Quick, rush it up. <laughs> wing it. <laughs> I see what you did there. And Ouch. so they wing it. And of course... Fluttershy falls unconscious. And when she wakes up, everything has been solved. Fluttershy sees her, uh, the butterfly that she wanted to see. And the end. Yep. Literally yep. the end. Well, Unconsciousness. Solving all your time travel problems since Aragon. <laughs> <laughs> Pass out. I'm pretty sure there is, uh, there is a, a glass case in every writer's house. That is like, you know, those cases where you have like a fire extinguisher or an axe or something. Mm-hmm. And on the, on, the, on the glass case, there are three pages. One is amnesia. Mm-hmm. The other one is flashback. Mm-hmm. And the other one is passing out. Oh, wait, you and forgot one more, James. You forgot one more. Which, uh, evil twin one? brother. Evil twin brother. That's or sister. Right. Or sister. Yes, yes. yes. Or, evil twin sibling. <laughs> or evil parents. Oh, yes. or evil Or evil parent. Yeah. Or doppelganger. Oh, or, true, yeah, true. It's like it, it is. It is a trope that writers like to use. But then again, you kind of have to uh, understand the ending is almost justified uh, for the fact that they gave us uh, a lot of creativity during the entire pa- during the mm-hmm. entire comic. To me, to me, it doesn't make the comic great. It, it is still a good comic, mm-hmm. but I can understand why they had to end it this fast. You have a limit of twenty four, twenty five pages. Yeah. There is so much you can put in 25 pages before you run out of space. And with Discord of all characters, a guy that just, just by himself, he opens, he opens up so many different creativity uh, or to creative uh, ways to tell a story. It kind of it feels bad that it ends, mm-hmm. but it, that is not really a bad thing. Like if when something leaves you wanting for more, that, is usually, that usually means there is something really good in it. And apparently that this butter dragon is, or Herbert, as Discord like to call him, has been real friends or real good friends with Discord from a very long time. And it, this does come into the question, or sorry, um, this does bring up the question of Discord. Has he always been evil or has he been, you know, um, just playful or really chaotic, chaotic neutral, as they say? Well... In Keep Calm and Flutter On, Discord said he's never had any friends. Mm-hmm. So pe- so folks have pointed out that uh, this Butter Dragon 
uh, what was his name? Hubert. Yeah, Hubert. Hubert technically conflicts with what they said in the show, but, you know, separate continuities or a little bit of flexibility. It's not going to ruin the comic for me. Oh, oh, this could be his friend after he got redeemed and he went time traveling, you know. Who knows? Who like, knows? I have, <laughs> I, I have, I have a, I have a possible justification right, here. Actually. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if you guys remember the Smurfs, mm-hmm. right? Oh God! All right. Well, not really. Uh, you remember Gargamel, who, of course, is the villain of the Smurfs, mm-hmm. the bad guy. He had a cat. Uh-huh. Uh So maybe this butter dragon could be considered kind of like this court's pet and. Because, or, or like Discord's animal friend, and being an animal, maybe Discord never considered like a, a, a sentient talking uh, friend. Probably. Because you, you can have a lot of cats, you can have a lot of dogs, but you cannot have conversations with them, or they cannot tell you in your own language, oh, I love you, you're my friend. So. Who knows? Oh. Maybe. Oh. oh, I don't know. My my golden retriever. She makes it known she's happy to see me. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh my. No, but uh, I do like my hit cannon or my theory for every adventure that Discord went um, with Bats and even Hubert is after his uh, redemption or after he got good. And, you know, um, I'm free, I'm free, what do I do? You know what, let's just travel around. Let's travel through time and space on my, not TARDIS. Not a TARDIS, trademark. His steampunk time machine. Oh, yes, yes. uh, Oh, yes, I forgot to mention the steampunk elements to this. (laughs) People love steampunk ponies. Oh, yeah, they are. They love them. They love steampunk everything. Uh True that. But uh, I'm not saying I, I dislike Hubert, but at the same time, it's like, oh, here's a butter dragon. Let's go home. Comic's done. Bye. Yeah. It's, <laughs> Comic's it's over. Quick. Bye. Yeah. Although I guess there's always the promise of a return trip. Yeah, true that, true that. Yeah, there is always there is always the possibility of maybe we can come back. Who knows? Perhaps even a storyline involving uh, this Cortan, his time traveling. Now that we know he's a good guy. Um, and this is kind of like, what, the third time that he has showed up in... In a in a comic where he has been highly involved, I mean, mm, I it's think, this yeah. one, this one, the Kitty Margrosaders, uh, the Kitty Margrosaders and Discord friends forever. And no, 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 no. we do, we don't talk about uh, spoilers. Yeah, I know spoilers, so. but so okay, uh, well, that's the end of the comic. Um, shall we discuss final thoughts, or do you guys think that we have wrapped them up uh, already in in our dissertation? Well, well I have. I have one final thought. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Go for it. <coughs> <coughs> Goodbye, Hubert. We're going to a time where you and all you know are extinct. <laughs> uh, I, oh. just ru- <laughs> I just ruined the comic for everyone. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Fluttershy is walking down the, down, down the field one day and discovers the remains of Hubert. Well, well, you, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, 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 here's the deal. Here's the deal. Fluttershy knows nature can be very fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> so she's used to it. She's used to it. I just, uh, I could see Discord doing a little, doing a little Shakespearean holding Hubert's <laughs> skull in the future. Alas, poor Hubert. Poor Hubert. I knew him, Fluttershy. <laughs> And we're dark. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, but really, who? Final thoughts, everyone? Oh, well, like I always support, let's go invert the alphabetical. Silver, you go first. Oh, like I say, it's a fun comic with a lot of nice visuals. Uh, I question some of what they're trying to establish with Nightmare Moon and maybe the introduction of Hubert, but all in all, it's harmless. The characters are fun. I will say, I guess the Crusaders don't really, aside from Sweetie Belle, the Crusaders don't really stand out. They're more just sort of along for the ride. This is Discord and Fluttershy's tale. Mm. And the the Crusaders are more caught in the middle. That is almost a running theme with these comics when you think about it. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Well, uh, to me, I I think that the comics, they're awesome. Um, You got good art, good coloring, good writing, except for a few parts here and there. Um, the pop culture reference 
It's not that little, uh, but it's not that much. It's just the right amount. Yet the ending is, uh, let's just say, there's better endings elsewhere. But hey, for what it's trying to tell, it's pretty okay. I, I can't wait to see Discord in future issues. Um, I am happy with the creativity and with the imagination that this comic throws at you. Uh, enough to completely ignore how rushed and almost uh, poorly put together the ending is. Uh, but I completely understand why they did that. Uh, because they throw you so many different crazy ideas. And such interesting discussion this, the, uh, regarding how uh, how the past worked. Uh, the idea of the elements of harmony being reincarnated from species to species. Or just uh, not just about talking about Nightmare Moon, but going to other places like the future with the cyber ponies and the sea pony uh, universe. And it's like, it is a very creative, very imaginative comic, full of very likable characters. Like, even Bast with her hissing at Fluttershy, even I uh, uh, found something uh, funny and appealing about her. So, yeah. Oh, I, I ship it. I, 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 uh, you, you, ship it. you ship everything, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> you ship something to me. I know. Um, but, yeah, overall, I really like this comic. I think it's very fun, very creative, and you guys should definitely check it out. Although now, I've, now that you say it with the reincarnation of the elements, I've just realized something. What? If Princess Celestia making Twilight and Alicorn has indeed extended her life beyond uh-huh. that of her friends, uh-huh. then the harmony is broken. Twilight, Twilight's spirit shall be trapped in that eternal body for much longer, and her friend will not be reborn with her friends, and Nightmare Moon will conquer all. Oh no! <laughs> and so, by by making her an alicorn, Hasbro, I mean Celestia, <laughs> has doomed the universe. Oh no! Uh, life imitating art, or otherwise. Mm. So there you go. I have put a dark spin on at least three things this this review. Well, who knows? Maybe maybe Twilight will still be alive, and she will align with the other elements, who will be what birds at this point. Oh so, god! <laughs> uh... Twilight. Twilight flying into a uh, battle with a group of pigeons perched upon his back. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> you don't mess or around with a... those pigeons, yo. You don't mess around with those pigeons. Or a bunch of owls, and then you link with the uh, Gahul, Legend of the Guardians. Who? <laughs> Gahul. Who? 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 Oh, no, 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 no. Stop. <laughs> Friendship poop attack. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh. <laughs> then you can see. Then you can really taste the rainbow. Oh, Ugh. God. <laughs> Anyway, uh, speaking of poop attack, uh, next week we are going to be reviewing uh, issues number 26 and 25 of the main series. Ah, boy. I'm not looking forward to this one. Uh, Neither am I. I really am not. But hey, we have... The anticipation. Mm -hmm. I am actually rather hesitant to talk about them, so... Okay, well... We're going to uh, we're ending this review today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thank you, well, for listening to us rambling and talking about pony comics for almost an hour, right, Norman? Uh, yep, almost an hour. Wow, impressive. We always find ways to outdo <laughs> ourselves talking about comics and ponies and stuff. <sighs> yes, I have no life. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I have no life. Uh, I <laughs> this have- is my life. <laughs> Uh, I, I have no moth and I am a spony. <laughs> Whereas I have no shame. <laughs> As some of my homework should, should denote by now. Uh, it is, uh, believe me, I'm Spanish. We, wa- we are born without shame. <laughs> I, I noticed something, I noticed something. Silver, when he's on his show, he's very PG. When he's on ours, oh my, throw that out the window. <laughs> I'm free! It's like, welcome to uh, After the Facts, After Dark. Oh my. Well, technically, uh, this is good because uh, Silver reviewed 20, uh, issue 25 and 26. So, over there, he was very vocal about what he thought. Now, let's see what he thinks about that issue in this No Holes Bar review. I'll give you a preview. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to be as restrained as possible because I really want to see that happen. (laughs) But that will be for next week, everybody. Mm. We're going to leave you all with uh, our lovely theme song. And now, it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye. Sayonara, bye-bye.
That means see you all later. I love you guys so much. You're wonderful people in Hypogriff. Walk, 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 walk. I thought it was Pac-Man. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>